share a few things with you today. Uh, there's, there's four things. There's uh, questions, wicked problems, dots, and orchestras. I teach business model innovation uh, in Mexico, uh, and I share many, many business model uh, examples with, uh, uh, with my students. And um, this is all very interesting, and it's great fun. And, and what I often ask at the end of the session that I, that I do with them is, would these business models work in Mexico? And the resounding response is always, no, it wouldn't work. Uh, there's various reasons it just wouldn't work in Mexico. And I realized that this was a very kind of constrictive uh, answer uh, to this question. Uh, and so I started changing it to this, which is how can we make these business models work in Mexico? And the result was just amazing. The difference in the responses and the answers was incredible. Uh, and this led me to an insight. And the insight was that uh, the quality of our questions determines the quality of our answers. And we're here in TEDx, TEDx is a shock of you, uh, and uh, our purpose is to explore disruptive innovation in higher education, because the system is broken. Um, and the, the examples that I've, that I've seen so far, and there are many, they're not all the same, uh, but many of the examples uh, are mostly uh, fragmented solutions. Um, and this obviously has, has a profound effect on, on how we actually work things out. So the question on our minds at this moment is how can we transform this broken system? Uh, and, and this is a great question, but perhaps uh, we need to look at uh, another way. Is this the right question that we're actually asking? Uh, maybe we should be asking, uh, why are most proposed solutions fragmented? Uh, and maybe we need to look at the, the system itself for clues. So I went and looked, uh, and I, I interviewed lots of students, uh, and they all told me a very similar story. And the story was uh, of a sort of fragmented thinking. Uh, and uh, it sort of echoes a lot of the, the things that uh, we heard from previous speakers. Uh, but, I, but I've converted this into a story, and the story is uh, of a business graduate. Uh, and each one of uh, the, the, the semesters that they went through, I've converted into a song. Well, part of the song, rather. Uh, and so this is the first sound. Imagine this is marketing. Okay? Uh, so this is the first semester, and the second semester, maybe the student studies finance. This is the sound of finance. Finance is a bit slow. Uh, and finally, the, uh, the student studies um, uh, economics, and this is the sound of economics. And at the end of the, end of the period of when they graduate, uh, they're supposed to put all of these ideas together, all of these different concepts together into one thing. Uh, but what, effort, what often happens is that uh, you end up with this kind of rather weird sounding song when, graduates, uh, when students graduate. And uh, so this is the version uh, of a sort of weird sounding song. Anybody recognize it? Don't worry, be happy. And I think this is the kind of attitude uh, that we've had to education for, for way too long. Um, so this is not limited just to business. It's actually uh, something which I see regularly uh, when I speak to students from, from all over the campus uh, in all of the multi-disciplines uh, that, that, that this university offers. offers. Um, fragmented thinking doesn't just have uh, a limiting effect on our ability to, answer, uh, to ask the right questions. Oh, sorry, to the ability to discover the answers, but it has a profoundly negative impact on our ability to ask the right questions. Um, Steve Jobs, uh, in a famous speech uh, in Stanford, said, you can't connect uh, the dots looking forward. Uh, you can only connect the dots uh, looking backwards. Uh, and I think this is a great, uh, a great thing, but I think uh, what we need to do is convert this back into a question, convert this quote into a question. Uh, and then we get this, is why can't we? Who can? And uh, what if we could connect the dots uh, looking forward? So again, I went on a search, uh, and I discovered that orchestras connect the dots going forward all the time. And I just kind of maybe <laughs> think that this is kind of interesting. So how can we start connecting the dots looking forward to solve wicked problems, the biggest problems uh, in the world? So imagine the dots as diverse talents, skills, passions, and experiences. Wouldn't this be great? Well, it turns out that the world now has seven billion people on it. Uh, and each one, of those, uh, well, each one of those people have these diverse skills, talents, and abilities. And only if we can start connecting them together, we can actually start creating uh, an amazing orchestra. And it turns out that's exactly what we can do. The world's orchestra is growing exponentially. Why should we, uh, we should recognize that each, uh, that the specialized knowledge is part of this greater orchestra, uh, and that Great questions are an equally important part of the symphony as, as the answers themselves. So, isn't this all a bit obvious? Well, maybe, 
But what's interesting is that the wicked problems still continue to exist. Uh, and, uh, and we're still making little bits of progress, fragmented progress. And I think what's interesting is that our education system has been very good at preparing individual players uh, to play individual instruments. And we need to stop doing that. We need to shift this away, away from our obsession with right answers towards discovering together uh, the right questions. So, armed with the right questions, social entrepreneurs stand a better chance of tackling the wicked problems of the world. What next? So, join the conversation, share your stories about sym uh, symphony thinking. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>